Okay, so here's the scenario. You are testing a new phylogenetic uh, technique to reconstruct trees, and you want to compare it to a uh, previously used technique. So let's say you want to compare it to uh, maximum likelihood or maximum parsimony, any of the other existing techniques. Um, but you, you've spotted a tree in the literature that was performed with one of these previously uh, used techniques, and you want to compare it to it. Uh, but you don't have a digital copy of that tree. All you have is an image, uh, such as this image that we're looking at here. So this is just a real simple phylogenetic tree. And we need to get this in a form that we can use in analyses to compare two trees. So uh, we need to convert it from an image to uh, a digital format that, that can be interpreted. So there's a software program called Mesquite uh, that's suitable for this task. And I have Mesquite opened up here, and I will play, paste, uh, or I'll show in this video uh, exactly where to get this software program. Uh, but for now, I'm going to show you how to use it to recreate a phylogenetic tree. So once you have Mesquite open, you're going to click File, and you're going to click New and create a new project. And so we're going to call this Recreate Tree Number 2. And we're going to create the project. Click Save. And when you do that, uh, this window is going to come up here and it's going to ask you for a little bit of information about the taxa that you're comparing uh, as well as the number of taxa. So we're going to call this cats and we have five different cats uh, represented, or five different groups of cats represented uh, on this tree. We have the lions, the leopards, the jaguars, uh, the tigers, and then the domestic cats. So that's five, so we're going to come back here. we got five taxa included in here. We don't need a character matrix because we're not actually recreating uh, the data. We just want to recreate uh, the tree itself. So we'll click OK, and we'll wait for the, the software to process that and give us a window where we can do some editing to the uh, names of the, the cats, the different cats. We can give them the names that they actually have in the uh, the phylogenetic tree which we're trying to recreate. So we're going to need lions, leopards, jaguars, tigers, and domestic cats. So we come over here and we select the text tool and we change the names. Lion, leopard, jaguar, tiger, and the domestic cat. Okay, now that we have all of those edited, now we want to come up here and click Tax and Trees, New Tree Window, and with Tree to Edit by Hand. So we're going to edit the tree by hand. And the software gives us a, basically just a generic uh, version of the, the tree. Uh, but we need to get the tree in the form which we see here. So Lion and Leopards. Uh, are on one monophyletic group together and then jaguar, tiger, and domestic cats are alone. So we go back to uh, mesquite and we have the selection tool selected there and we see that this is not the same topology represented here. So we need to adjust it a little bit. Uh, we need to move the jaguar on their own branch. Uh, we need to move the tiger to its own branch, so I just drag it to where I want it. That phylogenetic tree to match this one. So they both match. Now then, just a, a few more things I'm going to show you here. Uh, there's a rotate tool in Mesquite that randomly rotates branches. And I'm not particularly fond of this because I don't like the random... Uh, aspect of it, especially whenever you get into more complex trees with this, because if I click right here, it will randomly rotate those. So sometimes it won't even result in a change in those. So sometimes it will, as it did just then. And that's not necessarily what I dislike about it the most. What I dislike about it the most is if I click further back in the tree, it randomly rotates all of the nodes in the tree. Um, I'd like to have a little more control over that. So there is a way to do this. Uh, use this, this move branch tool, the same one we used, the same selection tool that we used initially. Uh, 
and if we want to rotate about a particular node, then we can drag the taxa across that node. So as you can see here, I'm able to alter uh, the, the rotation about this node uh, by dragging. And I can do the same thing. So if I wanted to invert this whole tree, I can do the same thing with each one of these nodes. And now I've completely inverted the tree. So that's how you recreate a phylogenetic tree by hand. Now you need this phylogenetic tree uh, in a format that you can use in many other programs. And I there's a really easy way to, to export this tree in NUIC format. So if you click here to tree, and then you go to utilities, and copy NUIC tree for open tree. Okay, and that copies it in NUIC format, and then you can just use Notepad if you're using a Windows computer. And there's the tree in NUIC format. We can then save the tree, and when you click Save As, make sure you add the, the NWK file extension. So uh, let's just go, go back to uh, the desktop. And I have a folder on my desktop that's called Projects Folder, which I just keep various stuff in. And so we're going to call this Cat's Tree. And then we're going to add the, the file extension for a NUIC format, NWK. And we're going to click Save. Okay, so now we have a NUIC formatted tree on our desktop, and we can use it in whatever program uh, we have that, that uses NUIC format. For example, uh, TreeView. We could use TreeView uh, to look at and edit that tree. So there you have it. That's how you recreate a phylogenetic tree. I've used this to recreate uh, trees with many taxa. Uh, you know, upwards of a hundred or so taxa. Uh, it, the process of, of uh, recreating a tree whenever it gets many taxa and many uh, branches and so on and so forth uh, can get pretty complicated, but this software program makes it far easier than trying to do it uh, with a pen and paper or uh, just strictly through notepad. This gives you a visual way to uh, recreate the tree. So that's how you do it. I hope this helped you, and if it helped you, please uh, like the video in uh, YouTube. Thank you very much.